Fear Sock Knitting class online. My name is Denise and this is class six, the foot and the toe. We've made it. We're almost to the end of our socks, you guys. Thank you to everybody that has been following along. Um, thank you to everyone that followed along in last week's class, class five. That was the gusset on Magic Loop. Class four and five had a lot of information in them, and I know it, it may have been difficult for some of you to follow, and but you did it, you made it through, um, and I'm, I'm so, so excited to bring you now today's class. So we're going to be talking about the, I'm glancing at my notes as usual, we're going to be talking about the foot length, um, knitting to your desired length and what that means, and discussing toe decreases um, and we're going to be covering two types of decreases um, a wedge toe and a round toe i've put instructions for the round toe in the pattern in the no fear shorty socks pattern but i'm also just going to briefly talk about a wedge toe which is a little bit more of a traditional toe um, and has a much more sort of triangular i guess maybe trapezoid kind of effect so you have the triangle and then the top is sort of um, squared off as opposed to a more rounded toe which is uh, the ins which are the instructions that are within the pattern um, so before we get into all of that I just I know I like to do the Q&A at the end but I want to just cover a couple of things right now um, one big recurring question and I, I think I've covered this really in the last three classes but I will say it again people are asking why are there things techniques and tips and tricks that I'm discussing in the tutorial that is not in the pattern. Okay, let's cover this one more time. The pattern, the No Fear Shorty Sock Pattern is a basic sock pattern that I have put out on Ravelry as an accompaniment to this class, but also as a freestanding pattern, sock pattern on Ravelry. And that pattern can be used by any knitter, beginner or experienced, using any technique. So I chose not to and really couldn't put in exactly how to rearrange your stitches or knit to half of the instep stitches, place a marker, knit to, because that half may not apply if you're using a nine inch needle because there is no halfway point, or if you're using DPNs and you distribute your stitches in a completely different way than you do when you're using two circulars or magic loop. Also, if patterns included every single um, tip, trick, technique, style of knitting, patterns would literally be about this big. They'd look like phone books. So the reason for this tutorial is to teach you how to, and make reading the pattern easier and teach you how to knit your socks um, with ways that I have learned that I find making make the process a little less frustrating and easier to understand. So that is the reason why there are things here that are not in the pattern. Uh, I hope that's understandable for everyone. Um, once I explain that, and I've gotten that question so many times in private messages, um, comments down below, private emails, and I've I, that this has been my response to everyone. Um, so I hope that that's understood. Uh, also, and I think I even say that in the pattern that it's not written for any specific technique. It is basic patterns are giving you exactly that the basic information that you need in order to knit the sock the hat the sweater the cowl whatever it is that you're knitting the mittens etc so that covers that question and I also got a couple of questions about changing color that is going to be a separate um supplemental I guess you call it or bonus video I've been referring to them as bonus videos um, I haven't put any out yet because I've been focusing on this um, but technically this is the last um, video for well I guess not the last I don't want to say that because then it sounds like it's coming to an end but um, in terms of all the stages of a basic sock this is where we are right now um, I'm going to do a separate video for the Kitchener stitch that is also another big um, area that people find confusing and a little more challenging when they are knitting socks. If you're knitting a heel flap and gusset, it's the heel flap, it's the gusset portion that's challenging. And a lot of people have questions and frustrations with the Kitchener stitch. So I'm going to cover the basics here and then do a separate video. You're not gonna have to wait until next Saturday. That will come out um, 
soon after this. Our videos go up on Saturday morning, which is probably when you are watching this um, and when it is uploaded. Uh, but I will have that second video up for you um, before the Kitchener video up for you before next Saturday as a as a compliment to this. So this is class six. That will be class like six A. <laughs> um, how to do the Kitchener stitch in detail. And there's two ways to do that. And I will be covering both ways um, to do the Kitchener stitch. So again, for so I've covered what we're doing today. Um, again, it's foot length, uh, knitting to your desired length, and then the wedge and the round toe. Um, we've covered the questions. So I'm going to demonstrate now. I'm not going to lie. This week was really challenging for me. Um, Personally, there were a couple of things going on um, at my children's school, a couple of things going on here at home. Um, so I didn't get as much prep knitting done as I would have liked for the socks for this class. But I have, I have gotten the socks to a point where I can show you um, how to do, how to rearrange your stitches. And that's the other thing we're going to be talking about how to, when you're working the when you get to the toe decreases, you have to move your stitches around. And we're gonna cover that in just a little bit, okay? So let's talk about foot length. You have measuring, counting, trying the sock on. Now, when you're whether you're using magic loop or two circular magic loop or two circular needles, the needles are flexible enough, and those techniques are flexible enough that you can try your sock on. So as I talked about measuring in class three, we're not measuring. <laughs> that is not always the most effective way to guarantee that your socks, the foot of your socks are going to be the same length. And I showed you why in that video, um, there are a lot of external factors that affect that and just the knitter not measuring exactly the same each time. You may pull a little bit more, etc. So that is why we are not measuring. What I do for my socks, and I have knit quite a few pairs, what I do for my socks, I know exactly how many rounds I need from my heel to where I'm going to start my toe decreases. That's, that is for my foot. I know exactly how to do that. Sometimes I will tweak that a little bit, go maybe five to 10 rows, not even as many as 10, about five rows less, or sometimes even three to five rows over. But my midpoint is usually... 65 to 70 rounds on my foot and I am a size seven and a half. Um, now what happens when you wear your sock and people were having questions too. Well, if I'm an eight, do I, do I knit the small size and go down? If I'm an eight and a half, do I knit the eight or do I go up and knit the nine? You always want to knit a little bit smaller because your sock is going to lose length because when you put your sock on, it is expanding, so it's gaining width, which shrinks the length. Does that make sense? Um, I just realized I didn't put my phone in airplane mode. That's why I keep reaching up to move <laughs> alerts. I'm sorry, I hope that's not distracting. Um, I will turn that on once I actually start the demo. So um, I lost my train of thought. That is terrible. Okay, so you are losing you are losing length with your width when you slide the sock on. So because you are new, because many of you are new, um, new to sock knitting, you have to play with that. I cannot give you a number and say, knit 65 rounds and start your toe decreases. I cannot do that uh, because I have no idea exactly how long your foot is. I also, there may be other features on your feet, um, high arches. There could be lots of other factors. Your feet may be maybe seven and a half inches when you go to get your feet measured, but they may be wider, which eats up that length. So you really have to figure that out on your own. That is something that comes with time and experience. So, but I do recommend once you try the sock on, and I'm going to show you um, where you start your decreases, those are going to start at the base of your little toe, at the base of your smallest to right at that crease line. That is where you are going to start your toe decreases. And I will show you that on my foot because I know someone's going to say, but where is that exactly? <laughs> so I will show you that on my foot. I am not pedicured, I apologize, but I don't have any dry feet, so it'll be okay to look. I know people have feet issues, but anyway. Um, so yes, uh, I am talking quite a bit for this particular class because it's a little bit more instruction as opposed to um, demoing for this class. Once you've gotten, 
once you've knit your sock, you've tried your sock on, you've gotten to the base of your little toe and you know, okay, this is comfortable for me. I think I can start my toe decreases. Go back and count. Now, if you've been using a progress keeper all along, you know how many rounds you have completed, whether that's 50, 60, 70, whatever the case. It may even be as many as 80, 90, 100. Depends on how big your feet are or the size of the foot you're knitting for. So once you reach that point, go back and count how many rounds you did make a note of it right on your pattern so that all of your information and use your pattern. I don't think I've said this before. Use your pattern as a little mini journal for yourself. Any notes that you've taken, um, anything you may have done to one sock, make a little note of it so that you know to do the same thing for the next sock. If you increased your the number of rows on your heel flap, write that down so that you know to do the same thing on your other sock. If you decided to change color, um, and that was also another question. I'm saying that now that was another question about changing color for the heel flap. And, um, I'm going to talk about that in one second. I don't think that needs to be demoed, but maybe I will demonstrate that because people might have questions anyway. Um, make a note, make notes right there on your pattern, what you're doing to one sock so that you can turn around and do it for, um, you can do apply those to the second sock. Uh, again, it's one of the reasons if you don't make those notes, maybe you'll remember and good for you. I tend to remember what I've done. Um, but there are also times if I've put a project down and I don't come back to it for a few months, it's gone. I don't remember what I've done for socks. Like I said, I have been knitting for a while, so I do remember it's a standard formula that I go to every single time for every single sock. Um, so I don't have to look that up, but I would make a note for yourself while you're still in the beginner stage definitely make a note of what you're doing. So, um, so knitting to your desired length, what does that term mean? That term simply means you will knit until you have reached the base of your toe to your desired length before you start your toe. This is really annoying me. Um, before you start your toe decreases, that is knitting to your desired length to the length of the foot you are knitting for which may be a gift for someone or to your own foot length where we're going to start the toe. That is what that term means. Someone said to me, well, how do I know what my desired foot length is? That is what it is. That is what you are knitting up to. Um, so I think that covers all of the theory that I wanted to go over with you guys. Um, I want to also show you where, where you should be in your sock at this point. So here we go. Now, I hoped to be a little further along so I could actually try this sock on for you. And I apologize, I realize this sock is looking a little blown out right now. Ah, and also for the sharp eyed among you, um, I ran out, this is still my go-to, um, now that I'm holding it up, I see the, the, the jog here. Um, I use Malabrigo sock yarn. That is always my go-to for contrasting uh, cuffs, heels, and toes. Uh, but I ran out of, <laughs> I ran out of what I had been using for up to this point when I started this sock. And right here at this line, can you see that? Where this portion of the sock looks a little creamier and this looks a little whiter, I had to change to a new ball. So that's just my little note about dye lots. Many hand dyed yarns, yarns from independent dyers, if you get the color, um, even if the yarns are a little more mass produced, like Malabrigo, I know they're dying on a larger scale than, um, let's say Legacy Fiber Arts is dying or Mitchell Fiber Crafts Creations are dying. Um, they're dying in much smaller batches. Malabrigo's dying in much larger batches. However, and they may not have many times, they'll repeat the same colorway, but they may not write an actual dye lot on the, on the colorway. So if you're ever ordering yarn, whether you're ordering it from an independent dyer or ordering it from a slightly larger company like Jim Bean or Loopy Hue or anything like that, um, or even just getting you know, your Patton's Croy or um, a different yarn from a big box store like Michael's or Joann's or, or anywhere I'm blanking on any other names right now, um, you definitely want to check your dye lots. This is the difference. This is what can happen. And you're thinking, well, it's natural. Why would I need to check the dye lots on that? Because it just depends. This may have all come from 
you know, Bo Peep, the sheep named Bo, and this may have come from the sheep named, I don't know, what do you name sheep? Max? <laughs> so it, it's, it's just, there is definitely a difference. So I'm so glad. I, and I really didn't notice as I was knitting it because it's kind of all bunched up in my hand as I'm going, but this is definitely what can happen with mix match dye lot. So if you're ordering yarn, again, from a dye, from a company, uh, an independent dyer, tell them that you want to make sure that the dye lots all match. If you're just ordering one, it really doesn't matter. If you're ordering more, let's say you're ordering 250 gram skeins um, or you're ordering bulk to make a bigger garment, definitely tell them you'd like the dye lots to be to match as close as possible. Many times they don't have dye lots, so what they'll tell you to do is is striping the yarn, but that's a whole other conversation. The point is, even with independent, independently dyed yarns or mass-produced yarns, dye lot is definitely a factor, okay? And I know more of you are gonna wanna hear what I was just gonna say, and I'll talk about that um, in another class uh, further down the line when we talk about changing color. Okay, so here's where you are in your sock. Just glancing over and checking the time as usual. Here's where we are in our sock. Now, in a perfect world, and if I'd had a much less, if I had a less busier week, I would have knit a little further along on this, but you're still going to get the idea. So what you're going to be doing, you have now been knitting, we were knitting back and forth like this. Okay, this is how we were knitting back and forth. Then we got to our heel flap, we worked that back and forth. Then we turned our sock very, very carefully and very slowly. We went to profile Wow, that jog is huge. I can't believe the difference there. Um, then we turned our sock to profile. Now, when you begin your toe decreases, you've got two choices. You can, each side, you're still dividing your sock in half. So you have 32 stitches here. Again, I'm knitting the medium size, so I'm referring to those numbers. I have 32 stitches here and 32 stitches here. What you'd like to do is you want to count and put a marker at the halfway point. Okay, you're going to put a marker or just count over to the halfway point on your sock. So I'm going to do that now. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 16. Okay, so this is my midpoint. I'm going to put a marker right there. Now, colors don't matter here. I've been using my red and green. They really, really don't matter at this point. So now I have my marker at the halfway point. Now you can, what you're ultimately doing with your toe decreases, you're going back now to knitting front to back, okay? You have two ways to do that. You can place your marker here, and what you're going to do is knit to three stitches before your marker. You're going to do a decrease, one stitch, one stitch, a decrease, and then keep knitting and do the same on the other side. I will show you this. I'm going to demonstrate this for you. Um, but I just want you to understand it for a second first. Or you can rearrange your stitches so that your sock is back in this position, okay? And then that to me is a little bit easier because you're going to have the edges of the knitting needles as your markers. You're not going to have this here. The reason I'm making the suggestion to do the markers in the middle, to do your decreases in the middle here, is some people find rearranging the stitches a little tricky, um, rearranging larger quantities of stitches to be a little tricky, but after working the gusset, you guys, this really should be a walk in the park. So let's go over and um, I'm going to, let's pause this, enough chatter. This has been 18, 19 minutes of chatter. Um, there was some good information in here though for you, just other tidbits, dye lots, et cetera, measuring, counting, et cetera. So now I am going to demo how to work our sock toe decreases. Um, and again, adjusting the length. Let me just cover that one more time. I may have already said it, but again, just knit until the sock is as long as you want. I've also had the question, how do I adjust the leg of the sock? Let me tuck this in. Same thing. You're, I've given you 15 rounds on your cuff, 15 rounds on the leg. If you want the leg, this is extremely customizable. If you want the leg to be longer, just keep knitting. It's really that simple. Just knit it to be a little longer. This pattern would not work if you want to do a knee-high sock because you need to work increases for your calf and the shape of your leg. But if you just want a longer length or a full length sock, just keep knitting. How many rounds is that? It's really up to you. It's knitter's choice. If you want a really super long, I tend to do traditionally a 20 
round cuff. And then for the leg of the sock, I will knit approximately 70 to 80 rounds. So my sock leg from cuff to where I'm going to start the heel can be anywhere from 80 to 100 rounds. Okay, that's my preference. You can knit for 60 rounds. That will give you a, a total of 80. It's up to you. You knit until the desi your desired length, how long you want the length of your leg to be. So that is how you would customize the length of your leg. Same thing applies to your foot. Okay, so there we go. Let's start demoing. Okay, everybody, so what I'm basically doing here is going to be the same. Here is as far as I've gotten on my magic loop sock. <laughs> so it doesn't matter. The length right now is not what's important. What we're covering is the technique and rearranging your stitches. That's what the focus is right now. So I'm going to show you, as you can see, our sock would be in the same position, just a little further along if I had knit a little further along. So I'm going to show you two ways. You can work your toe decreases on the side of the sock and rearrange once you're down to the correct number, um, down to your total, which would be 20 stitches, 10 and 10 on each needle. You can rearrange your stitches at that point. So that's method one. Method two is to rearrange your stitches first and then start doing your toe decreases. And then you can just knit until the very end. Okay, so I'm going to show you both ways right now. So again, I will show you this method of knitting the toe decreases in the center applies to both two circular needles and magic loop. You will not be missing anything. I am not eliminating anything. It's the absolute same. There really is no reason to knit it twice. You're doing the same thing. It does not matter which technique you're using. It does matter when you're rearranging the stitches and I will show you that in a moment. So I'm moving the magic loop off camera for a second. Let's put that back here. Okay, and here we go. So we are going to start now. Some people, like I said before, find it a little bit easier to work the decreases in the center and then rearrange the sock after. Okay, so let's start doing that. And your instructions are very clear. The instructions for the toe begin on page five of your pattern. As always, I have my pattern right, I'm, I'm knitting here, so my pattern is just off to my right, off camera. And what you're going to do is your setup round okay is now you're at the beginning of the marker okay so the beginning of the round has been moved um to the right side of your sock so the front cable is holding so needle one um divide your stitches evenly i'm just reading what i've written here front cable is gonna hold okay so you know what let's i'm basing this now i'm i'm reading what i wrote in the pattern let me do exactly what's in the pattern and not show you the side decrease. We're just going to rearrange our stitches here. So distribute the stitches evenly over the needles. Okay, I think this is going to be a little easier for everybody. So what you're gonna do, let's remove these markers. I'm sorry, I hope that wasn't confusing. I will show you this other method um, in a separate video because I do think it, it has merit um, and might be helpful for people, but I'm not gonna show you so that I don't get a gajillion emails, I'm going to show you what's written in the pattern. So what we're going to do, you are going to knit across, all right? I'm doing this on two circular needles first. Let's pull the camera back a little bit here. Okay, I'm going to be working with my two circular needles first. So just like we've been doing, you're going to grab the other end, my two nail polish ends, and I'm going to knit across Okay, until I reach that halfway point. So I'm going to knit across 16 stitches. Okay, so I've got two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay, so now we're at the halfway point on one side. What you are now going to do is do you see where my yarn is coming from? You're rearranging your stitches right now, okay? So that your, your round is now going to start at the right side of your sock, okay? At the side of your sock instead of the back of your sock, which is what we had been doing before when we were working the gusset. So now my yarn, I'm gonna drop my working yarn. I've knit across 16. 
I'm going to just slide as if to purl. The reason I'm doing it as if to purl is to keep the stitch oriented the same way or arranged the same way on the needles. Okay, so I'm just going to knit, just not knit, sorry, slip these stitches from my left to my right without working them. Okay, here we go. Now, I'm going to turn. Now, do you see where we are? This is where, this is what this looks like. Here's the first half we knit across, these we just slipped over. So I'm going to turn my sock around, I'm going to grab the other end of the needle, and I'm going to slip these stitches again. I want to move them from this needle onto the other needle, and it's all going to make sense in one second. So the purl side, the wrong side is now facing me, and I'm going to slip my stitches. We are only slipping purl-wise, I'm not doing anything knit-wise. Just move them over. Okay, and I'm just going to slide those same unknit stitches over. I've got three left. Okay, here we are, and I'm going to, now here's what your needle should look like. This is two circular needles we're using right now, and I'm just going to pull this needle through, and here we are. Okay, here we go. This is what, so now I have, the 30, other 32 plus 16 more stitches over here. So now I'm going to go to the other end. Can you guess what I'm going to do? I need to move half of these stitches onto this needle, okay? Because ultimately what I want to do is rearrange my stitches so they look like this. Okay, does that make sense? So here we go. We've knit across the first half. I slipped these stitches over. Then I moved them onto the other needle. So the second half of the, this second half of the 16 on this side, okay, I need to put these stitches on this needle. So now I'm going to reach for the other end, the needle that only has the 16, it's lonely, it wants more stitches with it. You're going to slide this needle over, just pull this into place, slide very carefully because there's a lot of extra stitches on there. Okay, slide these into place here. All right, and now I'm going to move these stitches over. They're a little tight, so you can spread them out. Let's come a little closer. Again, slipping purl-wise. And I'm going to count 16. So that's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay, now I'm going to pull this needle in, out, and look at that, guys. I have now rearranged my stitches. Here, this little space is where the original, is where my round began and ended at the back of my heel. That is not where it is now. We have rearranged this so that my heel, sorry, so that my sock has now been rearranged, so now According to the pattern, needle one is going to have the front, the front cable here is going to have the instep stitches or the top of your foot. And this needle, needle two, in this case, is going to have the back cable, the back or the back needle two or the back cable are going to have the bottom of your stitches. Okay, does that make sense? And now we can start our decreases. So I will do one decrease round here with you. So now because you're, what you're doing now for your decreases, here's your setup round. So knit to the beginning of the round, um, to the beginning of the round marker. You don't really need that. It's, you're now at the side, okay? So you're ready to go. So now your decrease round, round one is your decrease round. So you're going to knit one, knit one stitch. You're going to slip, slip, knit, and you're doing an SSK because what you want to happen, you want your decreases to lean in. So you want this side to lean this way, this side to lean this way. So let me put this down. So you want your toe, the decreases to lean in. This is a left leaning decrease. This is a right leaning decrease. So you're knitting two together to lean right. You're SSKing to lean left. So I have done that now. And now this one stitch here is where is what creates, and I'm just gonna bring the pattern over for a moment. 
is what creates this in here. So your decrease points here, your decrease points here, and you're leaving two stitches right in the center here unworked. And that's what gives you that design on the side. Okay, so now I'm going to knit to the other side. Hold on, give myself a little more working yarn. I am back on camera. I'm going to knit to the other side, just straight knitting across in real time. Okay, I'm going to knit across. Okay, hope this isn't boring for everyone. And I apologize if I confused you a little bit at the beginning with doing the two techniques. I just think rearranging, I'm going with the pattern and I think rearranging your stitches at this point is a little bit easier for you. Um, yeah, so just kind of disregard what I said before. I do think it's valid to show it and I will show it in a separate video later. Um, but for now we're going with what is in the pattern because I think it would be way too confusing for people um, to give them a whole set of instructions that are not in the pattern. That would be endless messages for me and confusion for you. So now we are knitting across until we have three stitches left. We are going to knit two together, knit one, and turn. So we've now knit across our instep. We're going to turn, same way we've been doing all along. Pull that one out, push, a list, push this one into place. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Same thing. Start with knit one, I'm going to SSK. Okay, and I'm going to just knit across to the other side. I will show you that quickly. Okay, so bear with me. I know it's watching paint dry for some of you and some of you love it. So you can just fast forward if this is tedious for you. Okay, almost to the other side. Oop, split a stitch. Almost to the other side. Just have a few stitches to go. You get to listen to me talk for a moment. <laughs> okay, and I'm down to three. I'm going to knit two together and then I'm going to knit one. Okay, and I have now started my decreases. All right, round two. Yes, there is a resting knit round. Round two is knit all of the stitches, so you're just going to do a plain round. Now, you're going to, the instruction says, repeat rounds one and two, so you're going to do a decrease round and a plain knit round until you have 20 stitches remaining on each needle. So you're going to have 20 stitches here, 20 stitches here for a total of 40. It does not matter which size you are knitting, okay? Now for then, once you've gotten to that, then you're going to just repeat, continue knitting just the decrease round, and you're going to do that decrease round until you are down to 10 stitches here, 10 stitches here, then you're going to work your Kitchener stitch. All right, and like I said, that will be in a separate video because I think it would be a little bit easier to understand if that's the only thing that I'm doing in the video. And you will not have to wait very long for that. If you'd like, there are many, many tutorials on YouTube, but I promise you will not have to wait very long. I just don't have a sock at this point that's up to that point. So I'm going to knit a sock to that point and then show you how to do the decreases there. So let me just grab the finished sock for a second. Hang on, running off camera. Okay, here I am. So here is what we are doing. Let's open this up. And this is what we're creating, you guys. So we've just started our decreases, okay? And we're going to just keep decreasing and you have a rounded toe. So we're decreasing now down to 10 stitches. So there's going to be 10 stitches here, 10 stitches um, here, 20 stitches total. And then the Kitchener stitch is when you weave your stitches together, there we go, so that the knitting looks continuous and like it's rolling right over, okay? That is what we're going to do. We are going to weave these stitches together, that is what the Kitchener stitch is, that creates this finished look and closes the toe of your sock. All right, so now I'm going to show you how to rearrange your stitches with Magic Loop and we'll be right back. So here we are with our Magic Loop. 
here are two needles on this side, here is our cable on this side, and it is the same thing. You're going to basically do the same thing here. So I am going to rearrange my stitches now because what I want to happen, this needle is going in this direction, I want the needle to move so that my sock is now in this direction. Okay, so I have to rearrange. So what will happen is your needles are going to be coming from this end and the loop from the cable is going to be coming from this end. So let's do that together right now. So I'm going to put my needle into place, same way we've, and we're gonna knit the same way we've been doing. So I'm going to pull this needle out, give it a little twist here, and I'm going to knit. Pull off a little working yarn. Okay, and here we go. So I'm going to knit across half my stitches half the stitches on this side. So there's 32, I'm going to knit to 16. All right, hang on, we're going to knit across. I've done two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So I'm right here. And as you can see, this is exactly where our gusset was. And it's actually kind of interesting. I'm glad this worked out this way so you can exactly see. This is, you've now decreased all of these stitches, okay? And these were your two stitches before your decrease stitch and then your plain stitch before you were working your instep. All right, so now I'm not going to knit the stitches anymore. I've knit across half. I am now going to slip the other half without knitting them, always slipping purlwise. So just move the stitches over and I am moving them from my left needle to my right needle. Okay, almost there. There we go. Okay, I am now there. So now I'm finished with this needle. I'm going to pull, going to turn. I'm going to now see where my cable is. I need to rearrange these. So I'm going to slide this needle into place Okay, pull this needle out that I was just knitting on. As you can see, my working yarn is coming now from the center of that needle. These are my slip stitches. I want to rearrange this the same way I did just now with magic with um, two circular needles. So I need to move these stitches. Okay, I'm going to knit, now slip across half the stitches on the other side. So I'm just going to pull my needle out, slip these over. One, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Okay, here we are. I'm going to pull this needle, sorry, pull this needle this way. I know someone will fuss that they weren't able to see. Okay, here we are. Now I'm almost there, so now I just need to rearrange. Okay. So both of my needles are now coming from here, okay? Technically my needles are in the right spot. I just need to move these stitches around just one more time. So just bear with me one second. Okay, here we go. So now there's no more knitting. With the magic loop method, there's no more, I don't have to shift the stitches um, or slip or knit the stitches anymore. Basically where this cable is, I just now have to pull and move the cable over to pull the cable out on this side, right at the spot where I start where I was knitting over to. So I'm going to very carefully pull this. And you see the cable wanted to be back here at the back of the heel where it had been, but now I'm moving it ta-da over to the other side. Now I just realized <laughs> Glad this happened, guys. So now wait a second. What's happening here? My needles are over here, but my working yarn is over here. So now we have to shift these a little bit. And I'm going to do that. Let me just give this a moment's thought. And I'm going to do that. And I will meet you back in one second. Okay. We're gonna do this together. So now I'm glad this happened because again, all of these things, magic loop is not, I understand it, but it's not my go-to method. So 
there are still certain things that I kind of have to figure out as I'm doing this with you. So now I'm so glad this happened because I'm sure it would happen to someone else. So what we're going to do here, I said there was no more rearranging, but there is. So not we're not knitting, we just want to get our needles from this side to this side. So I'm going to just slide over there, okay? And this is going to be a lot easier. So you're just going to slide all of these stitches over. Okay, I'm going to slide them all over to get my points, my knitting points over to the other side. So I'm just going to slide them. Okay, here we go, almost there. And as you can see, it's already starting to happen here. My cable is already starting to build on this side, okay? And I can literally just pull that over a little bit more, keep shifting, keep slipping, shifting the stitches over by slipping them purlwise, and voila, we are now where we want to be. So I'm pulling this needle out, pulling on my cable, ta-da! And now we are where we want to be. And you are going to work your decreases the same way that we did before. If you'd like, if it makes it easier, I will do the first round with you. Okay, pull my needle out. I am right into place here. So this is what your sock should now look like. All right, and you're going to decrease across. I'm going to knit one. I'm going to slip, slip, knit there we go and I'm going to knit across all right let's do this in real time guys okay here we go I'm just going to knit across okay here we go again I'm going to take this opportunity to thank you all again for buying the pattern and for following along. This has been such an amazing experience for me as a teacher, so thank you all again. We're almost to the end. Okay, here we go. Okay, so now I'm down to three stitches. I'm going to knit two together, knit one, and then turn. Okay, I'm gonna turn, get my working yarn, Pull this, push this needle into place, pull this needle out, my cable, my magic loop is exactly where I want it to be, and I'm going to do those decreases again on this side, and I will do that in real time. So I'm going to SSK again, okay, and knit across to the other side, almost there, I'm going to try to go as quickly as I can here. There we go, working over. And also, if you guys see any like little slight seams, I wouldn't call that a full ladder, but you are going to get a little indentation where there is a break in the needle. Once you've, I don't necessarily block my socks, meaning I don't wash the sock or submerge it in water, put it on a sock blocker and let it dry on the blocker. I do not do that ever. Um, to me, the blockers are just to show the sock, um, to display the sock, but I do not wash and dry on the blocker. So, but, not a but. So when you wash your sock, just lay it flat. You can lay it on a towel, you can lay it on those foam, um, you know children's foam blocks that kids usually play with sometimes that um, have letters in them? They're actual drying blocks. So you can lay it on the drying block, maybe on top of a towel, and then just leave it, kind of just arrange it so it's not in a, in a bunch, and then just leave it there and let it dry. That is how I dry my socks. Okay, so, oh, I'm down to my last three. I'm going to knit two together, knit one, whoops, knit one, and I'm good to go. Slide my needles back into place. Okay, and here we are. Here's my magic loop. And again, just follow along with the pattern now and you're going to continue your decreases. This is what we're doing. I will show this again. This is what we're doing and this is the type of toe that we're working on. Now, if you decided to just knit to continue alternating a knit round and a decrease round, a knit round and a decrease round, all the way down you get that wedge toe, you get that much sharper 
um, let me put this down, you get a much sharper angle with your decrease and then you get the, the slant. Now you do get the slant here, but how it, you can almost kind of gradually kind of move it into to look completely rounded. It's not going to look like that at all. It's going to be a much sharper edge running along the side and you have that wedge toe. So that is the other option if you wanted to do that. The instructions for that are not in this pattern. I will include them in the description box down below for you if you'd like to try a wedge toe. Okay, so that's basically it for our working the length of the foot, working your toe. And like I said, I will be doing a video, a separate video for the Kitchener Stitch. I think that needs its own video and you can look at that um, at your leisure. So I will see you all again in just one sec. I hope that that helped you all. Um, again, I want to apologize for um, talking about rearranging the two different methods of rearranging your stitches um, with that before I referred back to the pattern. I think that that happened because that's kind of how I um, how I do it. So and wasn't thinking about the actual instructions in the pattern. So I humbly apologize for that little glitch um i don't think it messed anybody up i don't think it was it threw anyone off again what's important is following along with the instructions that are in the pattern and understanding how to rearrange your stitches so i hope that that was clear for everybody again i'll say it one more time i know you you're going to want that kitchener those kitchener stitch um, instructions that tutorial and that i'm going to do um i have a few other pairs of socks that i'm working on so i will be knitting down to the toe on a pair of those so that you can definitely see how to do the kitchener stitch there I will say this, there are two ways to do it that I, I know and that I'm aware of. There's one that you do in four moves. Um, so there's two stitches that you do on one side on one needle and two that you do on the other side. But I found a much more efficient way to do it where you're kind of combining those two, those two moves into one. So you basically have one move on one side, one move on the other. And it's much more of a sewing. Um, you're sewing the other way, but it's a much more efficient way of sewing. So I won't Right now I'm talking theory and that may not make any sense to any of you, but I will definitely um, have that video up for you all very, very soon. I hope that this was clear. This video is a lot shorter because there's a lot less to demonstrate. Um, the decreases themselves are pretty straightforward um, and very clear. Your numbers are all clear. Now, if you, as you're knitting, as you're working on your decreases, if you say to yourself, okay, you know what? I think my toes are longer. I have longer toes. My big toe may be longer. So now what you want is for your toe to be approximately an inch and a half to two inches. Your toe decreases to be approximately an inch and a half to two inches long. That from where you start your decreases to where they end, that distance is usually, again, within that range of an inch and a half to two inches for the average foot. Now, what does that mean exactly? Because <laughs> there, there really is no such thing as an average foot. It varies from person to person. And I understand that some people have very large um, big toes. Some people have very small big toes. Some people have larger um, little toes. Oh, and I didn't show you. Um, don't worry, I will include that here where, you know what? I'll do it right now. Let's just pop off my sock so you can see where uh, that toe line is. I'm going to, I'm going to slide a sock on my foot. Okay. All right. So here we, oh, you know what? Okay. I'm not that flexible. I'm going to go back to the camera in one second and I will show you exactly where that line is on your foot that I was talking about. But what I did want to say before um, I get back to the second demo is if you have slightly longer toes, some people just have longer toes in general and you want that toe portion to be longer what you can do is let's say you decrease you do your first decrease round you can knit two rounds in between then do your decrease round and knit two rounds in between and do your decrease round until you get down to um your 20 and then just do the decrease round until you're down to um i'm sorry down to 40 and then down to, to the 20 stitches so there's 10 and 10 or there's 20 and 20 on each needle uh, you kind of have to play with that i can't give you an exact formula because i 
unfortunately can't see everybody's feet. So, and I'm saying that not really joking, but, um, people are going to ask me, well, it, well, how many rounds exactly there? It's impossible to answer that question because I can't see everybody's feet. You can even send me pictures of your feet and I still won't be able to answer because again, I don't have an exact measurement and it's not an exact science. You can do the math, you can play around with your decreases in distance, but that's a whole other conversation. Doing the math for decreases within a pattern. It's a completely separate video. So what I do recommend, and this may be helpful to you too, what you can do is run a safety line. Um, and we haven't talked about that, but what you'd basically be doing with your sock is you take it, leave it on the needle because you'll be able to work through it. You're going to leave your sock on the needle. You're going to take a tapestry needle with a completely separate color, a bright color, something completely different than what your sock yarn looks like. And you're going to just run the line, run that thread. You're just going to sew it through these loops on the needle. Just sew it through. And you're going to go into each stitch as if to purl and then leave that thread in place. That's called a safety line. So you're gonna do that on, and you can run it all the way through. If you'd like, you can do one strand all the way through, or you can do one strand on one side, one strand on the other side, and work your toe decrease. If you try your sock on at that point, and you're like, ooh, this is, my toes are bunched up, this is way uncomfortable, or, the, or it's too long, what you can then do is just rip back can slide it off the needles. I know that sounds horribly frightening, <laughs> but you can either knit back, just kind of tink backwards, um, or you can pull your needle out and that safety line is going to be in there stopping the stitches from continuing to run down and unravel all the way. Then you slide the stitches, always sliding your stitches on your needle as if to purl and re-knit your toe. Now, some people don't like the concept of that because it's like, well, I just did all this work and I put all this in and then I don't want to. Knitting is practice. Knitting is practice. Anytime you're learning something, it is practice. It is do and do over, do and do over. If you're baking a pie and your pie doesn't come out right, guess what? You're going to knit that again, you're knit. You're going to bake that pie again. Maybe you put too much sugar in, maybe you put in too much flour and it came out really dry. So you have to practice. It's practicing over and over until you get the sock formula that works for you or the person that you are knitting for. Um, I know people like exact answers, but there are no exact absolutes with anything like this, with knitting or m many things in life, because each person is an individual. Each person's different and each person has different features, different foot features, facial features, everything features, body features. Um, etc. And even with your food, maybe you like the drier crust on your pie, maybe you don't. So that is how you have to sort of tweak it and figure it out. The pattern is giving you a basic formula to follow on the average that works for many people. Again, it may not work for you and you may have to make an adjustment. So I think that basically covers, um, everything for this week's class. I will put a little video right after I'm talking here just to show you exactly where that line is on your foot. Um, I can't, I just, I really can't get my foot up. Maybe I can't. Okay. Maybe I can't. <laughs> um, my foot look kind of dry. I need to put some lotion on there before I show you. So I'm going to, um, stop the video. Thank you so much for joining me for class today. This class was a little bit chattier, but, um, I do think there's some good information in here for you. Um, I will try to add as much of that in the description box for you down below. And I will see you all next week for two at a time. Um, that will be the next official class, class seven. Um, we're up to class six, but in between, I will be doing class six and a half or 6.5 or 6A, whatever you want to call it, that will have the Kitchener stitch. So um, I will see you all again really soon. Thank you for joining me today. And don't go and stay tuned for the, um, the last little demo video. I will see you all again. Bye, everybody. Okay, everybody. So what I'm doing here is I've kind of fudged this a little bit. If I slid this sock on all the way, it would only reach to about the middle of my foot. So I'm going to, for the sake of the demo, I'm just going to pull it down a little bit to show you exactly where that point is on your foot that I'm referring to. So to your desired length is so is to right here, okay? Right at that line 
And again, my foot is sort of braced on the table here very carefully so I don't topple over. I'm not the most flexible. I am in jeans today. Uh, so here is where you want to knit your sock to until it hits right at that line, right at this line here at the base of your little toe. This is what I mean by the base of your little toe right where this toe starts okay right here and now in theory like i said the distance from here to here is about an inch and a half to two inches okay that's on my foot on your foot that may be different so that's where you have to sort of tweak and play around with how many rounds but on average the instructions in your pattern should work for your foot but again you may have to um, increase the number of stitches or even decrease because that may be um, too long of a distance for you if you have very short toes um, and just to accommodate your foot but when you try your sock on after you've done the full length of the leg um, full length of the foot on your sock like I said I didn't finish mine what you will do is try it on and this will fit comfortably right over your heel and you want the sock to reach this point right here Okay, again, I apologize. Some people have foot issues. Um, I rubbed lots of cream on so I could erase all the dry points. Um, just being realistic here, everybody. So that's it. And I noticed my foot is slightly turning blue. So I'm going to move my foot, which means circulation's cutting off here. Um, but that's where you want to knit your sock to. I hope this was very, very helpful. Happy sock knitting, everybody. And I will see you all again in the next video.